First of all, we're going to create a business card as part of our stationary group. The best thing to do is come up to the paper selector and simply choose business card as your paper size. To create a solid color background, just double click on the page border and that brings up your options dialog. Choose page and background and then turn on solid and choose any color that you might want to work with. Now you have a solid color background that will remain and won't move. However, I want to teach you a few different things, so I'm going to control Z, undo that, and we're going to do this a different way. What I'm going to do is come over and select my rectangle tool. Then I'm going to click in the top left hand corner and just pull down to here. In fact, I'm not going to try and size to my page, I'm going to type in the right measurements. If you just deselect, you can see the measurements of the page, 88.9 by 50.8. So select the rectangle, make sure the lock is turned off, otherwise it'll try to scale to the first size you type in. So 88.9, tab 50.8, hit enter. So that's the right size, but we need to center to our page. So I've written that down here for you, center to page. Click P on your keyboard. I'm going to give that now a cyan fill, and we're going to round the corners. Anytime you create an object with any of the tools in the toolbar, the shape tool usually will have some form of interaction with that object. In this particular case, I can use it to round corners. Click on any one of the four nodes, and just pull in any direction to round the corners. OK, back to my pick tool with the space bar. I'm going to create a duplicate. So plus on the keyboard, finger on the shift key. I'm just going to resize in a little and then make that white in color. Notice the thickness on the outside is thicker than the top and bottom. So finger on shift again. I'll just size up from the bottom a little and that looks fairly good. I'm going to put my objects all around the page now. It always pays to place your components around the object that you're designing on, either around the outside or roughly where you think they're going to be positioned. It helps you to think through your design. Well, I'm going to place there and create an angle on the white area of this rectangle. But first, I'm going to select both of these objects, finger on the shift key, and right click so that I remove the outline color. Then select the inside rectangle and Control Q, convert to curves. Now, I'm going to select my shape tool, F10, and add two nodes. By converting to curves, we were able to add nodes and reshape this object. And I'll double click right there as well. Now I'm going to select these two nodes and using control as a constraint, which will help me to pull down perfectly straight. If I let go of control, it's easy to go off of the vertical. But that helps me to pull down perfectly straight. That looks good. Z for zoom, and we'll zoom in for a closer look. F10 back to my shape tool. I'm going to convert this straight section of line to a curve. So simply right click your mouse and choose to curve. Now as I pull this node down, and I'll use that white area as a guide there, notice how it forms a curve in the middle here. I might just move that along a bit and push that up just a little. There we go. I'm also going to close this curve up a little bit. I don't want it to be quite so great. And just pull that one down a little. F4 to zoom back out. So you can see I've created a curve or a nice angle for my uh, rectangle there. What I want to do now is I want to place this piece of text on that same angle. The easiest way to do that is to right click and drag over the line of that object, let go and choose fit text to path. It will always automatically shoot to the start point of the object or what it considers, but we can simply slide it back around the line. And then you can snap in and out. Just simply move in or out of the line. It'll snap to various snap locations. And you can adjust those snapping points by choosing the tick snap option. I think that looks great. Let's convert that to the Ruark text and make it white. A little bit bigger. Finger on the shift key. A little bit more. And that looks quite effective, just like that. OK, a few more steps now. I want to select all of the remaining text and convert to the same typeface, the aerial, the aerial rounded typeface. You know what? 
in fact, we'll change the Peter Daniels to the Ruach typeface, just for something different. Let me tell you a very important rule of thumb whenever you're designing particularly business cards is try never to use more than two typefaces and that way your, your design will maintain integrity. Okay, now I quite like that, that's good. What I now want to do, I'm going to just place that there like that. I'm going to right align everything. So I'll select everything and on my keyboard, you can come up to the alignment toolbox if you want, but what's easy is R on the keyboard right aligns everything. So I'll just finger on control and I'll just place that back over there like that. The thing I, I probably don't like is the, the stock standard approach to the address. Let's do something different. So I'm going to double click on here and then backspace so it's a single line. Now with my pick tool selected, I've got my text now selected. Finger on shift, select the white background. We've got two objects selected now. Up to text, fit text to path. We're really doing the same thing as what we did with the hair design. With the little red node, we can push the text along the path a bit further, because I just want some of the numbers to go around the corner. That's good. Now we need to separate or break that text away from the path. So up to arrange and break text apart. Deselect everything, and then we can pull the text down. It's still a little bit big, so we can just scale that down, and that will be fine. That looks good. Pop that there like that. In fact, I think what we'll do is change some colors now. Peter Daniels and the address. Let's make that you know, a darker gray, say 60% black. And the bottom text, let's make that orange in color. What do you think? I think that's starting to look really great. I personally would like to add a little bit more color. So I'm going to create a splotch, like a dye splash down here, because they're a hair care company and they deal in dye. So let's add a dye splash just there. Adding the die splash makes a lot of difference to balancing up the card, and I really like the effect. Let me show you how I created it. So I'll move over a little on the page, select the ellipse tool, click and drag, and give that a purple color. Now I'm going to select the distortion tool, which is part of the interactive tools flyer. Select that. There's a number of options for distortion. The first option is called push pull. So I'll just push a little. I'm just trying to distort the, the uh, circle, as you can see spacebar to get my pick tool plus on the keyboard so that we can create a duplicate click and drag and rotate the duplicate and I'll change the color so you can see what I'm about to do distortion tool and the next effect under distortion is called zipper as we click and drag you'll notice it starts to create like a zip effect around the outside and that's all I wanted plus on my keyboard again click and rotate a little bit more in fact I might rotate that one back a bit and I'll change the color again so you can see this effect. Distortion tool. The next distortion is called the twister distortion. I'll show you this. If you really twist around, you get that really cool looking effect. Isn't that great? Well, I don't need quite that much. I'm just trying to distort a little bit on the last effect. Why have I done this? Because I, I want to create a very uneven outside surface. Now if I select all of these objects and weld them together using the weld option, weld uses the outline of all three objects and creates a brand new one. So weld together and it always uses the lowest object in the stack uh, to determine the final color. So I've got a very uneven set of points and that was what I was trying to achieve. Back to distortion and finally push pull again and watch what happens as we pull a little bit further we get what looks like a splotch. So my purpose was to create an uneven set of points that we could then create this splotch type of look. Finally, what I did over here was I actually applied an emboss effect. Well, I think that looks great. Let's take all of the components here and apply them to creating a letterhead. The first thing to do when designing a letterhead is to make sure you choose the appropriate page size. Well, I'm working with A4. You might want to work with legal or letter, etc. Now, I'm just going to zoom into our business card, and we're going to do something very different. So for right now, all I really want to do is gather all the components I need, and I won't need personal details. I'll pop that down there. Remember this text, we need to break that away from the text on a path, so up to arrange and break text apart. I'll also make that black in color so we can see it. I'll delete both of those backgrounds. Now these two 
pieces of text have been altered and I don't think we want them that way so quickly finger on shift select them both up to text and choose straighten text now that removes the effect of text on a path now I'll just pop those down there or up there out the way well we're going to design something very different because our customer they actually send out a tremendous amount of letterheads and they don't want to spend too much money so dropping back to a two color print rather than our typical CMYK four color print is going to be cheaper so how do we design around that well let's start from scratch and a brand new concept select the rectangle tool click and drag and this time I'm going to go with a different color I'm going to choose something like this baby blue it might not be that at the end but that's what we're going to start with right click to remove the outline color got to be very careful now to try and think only two colors the logo how do we work with the logo well I'm going to copy that down here so copy here we'll break that apart or ungroup so we'll ungroup that let's take our we'll take that and pop it on top over here say what can we do with our logo remember the logo is got lots of shading in it so therefore there's going to be lots of colors so what I'm going to do is select the logo and up to effects and I think we'll clear the effect so that will remove that bevel effect Let's increase the size a bit and I'm also going to combine the whole thing together because that will force it to be one color and I can't slip up and accidentally have one piece of different color to the other so I definitely know I'm working with two colors now pop that on there what if I stretch that out a little pull it down a little like that I don't mind that I think that looks quite good okay uh, in terms of the address we'll pull that here now it disappears underneath because it's on a lower stacking order so shift page up brings it to a upper layer in fact we could put that down underneath that doesn't look too bad stretch that out even stretch that one out or maybe alternatively pop that one on top and that one underneath and we'll make that one white in color might shrink the logo down a little and I might shrink the height of that a little there we go that looks a bit better and we'll stretch that out some more make the address match that looks good I quite like that so we're working with two colors because that's white of course it it just means nothing will print in that place and that's why you'll see white hair design let's pop that over here and see what we can do here again shift page up to bring to the top of the stacking order let's zoom in and what creative thing can we do with hair design let's uh, let's make it a little larger and we might do a half half so what I'll do is I'll make that white in color and then plus on my keyboard and then I'll make that blue in color and I'm going to crop away the bottom half so select my crop tool over the top and just down to there double click and there you go that's a half half effect that's pretty easy to do wasn't it that looks quite good okay so F3 zoom back out or F shift F4 zooms to our entire page we don't need that anymore but we'll take our splotches pop them down the bottom and just increase the size a little and of course we don't want that color so what does baby blue look like not so sure I like that or we could just go with the orange of course and that doesn't look too bad so again up the top excellent I think that's a really easy design and we've done that fairly quickly for you make sure you watch the next video because we're going to discuss some actual mistakes in here for going to two color print